We have looked at the three most common basic types of functions that we use to model various real-world situations, linear, quadratic, and exponential. It's important that we're able to identify what type of relationship we're working with based on the data that we're looking at. So these three most common types of functions, first we talked about the linear function. A linear function is a straight line made out of a constant rate of change. The same amount is added over and over again. If you're driving 30 miles an hour, every hour you go 30 more hours, plus 30 more hours, plus 30 more hours. The line for this is f of x equals mx plus b, where m is the slope and b is the y-intercept. And we should recognize the graph of a line as shown in this picture. The second equation that we've looked at is what's called an exponential function, where we have a constant multiplier. The same amount is multiplied over and over again. If a population is growing at 4% per year, we're going to multiply by 1.04 every year. 1.04 times 1.04 times 1.04. We're multiplying every year. And in this case, we end up with a curve that starts out flat and then gets steep really, really fast. The function is f of x equals a, the starting value, times b, the multiplier, to the x power. And finally, we talked about the quadratic function, which gives us the parabola, which has that vertex. It's going to start off going one direction, level off, and then go the other direction. So it might start increasing, and then it's going to start to decrease. Or it might start decreasing, and then it'll start to increase. That change of direction is often a clue that we are dealing with a quadratic function. So that change of direction, leveling off at the vertex. And the parabola is always of the form f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c. So now your task is to name the function that we're working with. This guy's not sure if that's the worst function name he's seen or the best. Hmm. So here are three functions. One of each type, can you identify which one's which? You might try and pause the video and see if you can name them all. And let's see how you did. This first function has the variable in the exponent. That should be a clue that we're multiplying the same thing over and over again. When the variable's in the exponent, we call that an exponential function. The second function here has an x squared term. We call that the quadratic term. That's your clue that we are dealing with a quadratic function. This last one, we see an mx plus b form, a slope and a y-intercept form, no exponents. That's a great clue that we are dealing with a linear function. Now what if you were asked to draw a quick sketch of what each of these graphs look like? Not perfect. We'll worry about perfect later. We've already got scales to graph each of these functions. But the exponential function, you should know, starts off flat on the x-axis, bends at the key point, and then increases quite rapidly. The quadratic function, you should know that it is a parabola. So it's going to be shaped something like this guy starting decreasing, levels off at the vertex, and then increasing. The linear function, though, you should recognize that's going to be a straight line. So that straight line is our linear function. Now we'd have to do a little bit of work to find the key points, make sure they're the right key points and they're in the right place. That's a whole nother lesson. Right now we're just working on identifying them and recognizing their shape. Here we've got three functions represented in tables. Let's see if we can look for clues in these tables for how we get from one point to the next in order to determine what type of function it is. And maybe we can find the equation. This first example, it's got a decimal in the first point. That might be tricky to get to. So how do we go from 3 to 6? To go from 3 to 6, you could add 3. Or you could multiply by 2. 
Let's see what happens in the next one. From 6 to 12, you could add 6 or you could multiply by 2. Does that, you might notice here, we multiplied by 2 both times. Is that going to work? To go from 1.5 to 3, can we multiply by 2? Yes. 12 to 24, multiply by 2? Yes. We're multiplying by the same thing over and over again. Repeated multiplication becomes the exponential function, which we know is of the form f of x equals a b to the x power. Well, a is the starting value at 0, which means a must be 3. And b is what we're multiplying by, which playing with our table, we found out we're multiplying by 2. So this graph must be f of x equals 3 times 2 to the x. Let's look at the next graph, see if we can make any sense out of it. From negative 4 to 2, you can see that we went up 6. That's interesting. And then from 2 to 4, you see that we went up 2. And then from 4 to 2, we changed direction. You notice now it's going down, down 2 and down 6. This graph started going up, getting bigger, bigger, bigger. Then it leveled off and changed direction. What type of graph is that? Well, the values go up and then come back down or the reverse, go down and come back up, you can bet we're probably dealing with a quadratic function. Now we do have enough information here to actually figure out what that quadratic function is, but it's going to involve a little bit more complex calculations than we want to get into right now. So we're not going to come up with the quadratic function that generated this table quite yet. Sorry about that scratch off there on this last example. I noticed there was a typo in it, so I made a new table completely. So we've got negative 1, 8, 0, 5, 1, 2, 2, negative 1, and 3, negative 4. We're going to attempt to figure out how these are changing. Well, from 8 to 5, it looks like we subtracted 3. We might have multiplied by some fraction, but let's see what happens with the next. To go from 5 to 2, we have to subtract 3 again. And then from 2 to negative 1, we subtract 3 again. And then from negative 1 to 4, we subtract 3 again. You notice we're doing the same thing over and over again, subtracting 3, subtracting 3. And when we add or subtract the same number, what we have is a linear function. And linear functions, we should be able to figure out really quickly because they're y equals mx plus b. We can come up with that equation. f of x is equal to m, the slope, or the rate of change, which we have just found out is negative 3 for every x, plus b, the y-intercept. The y-intercept is when x is 0, y is 5. So we will say plus 5. And this is the function represented by the table. So at this point, we should know enough about these three basic functions, linear, quadratic, and exponential functions, that we should be able to identify their graphs, their equations, and tables full of their data. Take a look at the homework assignment and see how you can do recognizing the different types of functions.